Okay, hey there, welcome back everybody. So this is our series on the basics of economic regulation. This is lecture number seven. In this lecture, we're going to consider the possibility that there's either demand side or supply side changes that impact uh, a natural monopoly in such a way that it is no longer a natural monopoly. Okay, uh, and what our regulatory response might be to that, what some of those pitf what some of the pitfalls might be, and how we would mitigate those. Okay, now over here to the left, we have sort of you recognize some of our sort of usual stuff, right? An average cost function, and here we have a demand function d of p that's producing some p star and q star. Now immediately we'll recognize this as a natural monopoly situation because of course the entire market demand uh, is captured by one firm. An example of something like this, imagine we have a very small town, just a handful of people live there, handful of cars, and there's only one gas station. Now that one gas station maybe is just barely making it, okay, gasoline, so fuel for cars. Okay. Uh, if there were two gas stations, uh, the situation would, would be even worse, right? The, in terms of the cost of production of supplying that, that gasoline, okay? Now, let us say that the town grows, right? And as a consequence, the demand for fuel, auto fuel, gasoline increases significantly. Uh, maybe we have a situation where demand shifts to D bar. Market demand is now 3Q. In other words, what this implies to us is that our market now has grown big enough that we can effectively sustain three gas stations, to continue our little example. So three gas stations can uh, supply in this market and supply efficiently, and hopefully compete with each other to bring prices to P hat. Okay. So what was formerly a natural monopoly due to expansion in the market becomes no longer a natural monopoly. Flipping over to the cost side, let's say we have a situation where fixed costs decrease. Now we know from our previous lectures that fixed costs are very important to understanding natural monopoly situations and situations where we, um, where the prices are wrong and consequently we need to regulate. So let's say that fixed costs decrease. Well, in that case, what 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 we can what we can infer from that is that there's going to be a change to the minimum efficient scale, right? So let's say that costs, fixed costs decrease, and we start off with ACQ, and then due to fixed costs increasing, we move to AC bar, okay? AC being average costs, of course. Initially, the minimum efficient scale was Q hat, and now under the new situation, it's Q bar. That initially, this was a natural monopoly situation due to demand intersecting the cost function at P star, which is less than the minimum efficient scale. So even a single firm can't produce at uh, the scale of operations or the scope of operations necessary to minimize costs. Okay. Now, due to a decline in the fixed costs of uh, operation in this industry, average cost changes to something like this. Minimum efficient scale changes to Q bar. And we now notice that demand is intersecting the cost function past the minimum efficient scale, in this case indeed approaching, my curse keeps disappearing, 2Q bar. Now, <clears throat> of course we've discussed the problems of sub-additivities in an earlier lecture, and so this is something that sort of we, we would need to sort of pay attention to, but su suffice to say that there is the beginnings of the possibility here that this could be become a competitive industry. So here we have a change in variable costs. Um, and so that's represented by AC here and then AC bar. Okay. Now we'll notice that initially uh, demand is such that, so choose whichever one. We'll talk, talk about the distinction in a minute. But whichever demand we choose, uh, production is occurring at Q hat and it appears to be at minimum efficient scale. Okay, so these firms are, uh, a firm, excuse me, natural monopoly is capable of producing at sort of peak efficiency. Whether it'll do so is another matter, right? But it's capable of doing so. Okay. 
And then let's say that something happens such that costs, at variable costs, particularly in this industry, rise. And let's say then they're characterized by something like this. Now, you know, w what could this be? Well, it could could be a lot of things, right? It could be like labor costs go way up, and most workers are like hourly. It, it could be that energy costs go up. It could be that transportation costs go up. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen that could produce this type of result. Now, <clears throat> if we consider demand here, DP, right? We'll recognize that originally efficient scale and then now greater than minimum efficient scale. In other words, in fact, it looks like two times minimum efficient scale. So in this case, if demand looks like this, then it's the case that, you know, this industry could become competitive, right? Because two firms could sort of exist in here in this market space and they could both be efficient and hopefully the, between the two of them they could compete prices down a bit <laughs> excuse me in the latter case d bar p here okay we see that uh in fact now the situation is not at minimum efficient scale the situation is such that the firm is in fact now more of a natural monopoly than it was before so it depends essentially on elasticity of demand Okay, how elastic is demand, whether changes in variable cost structures are going to sort of remove the natural monopoly or, or not. Okay, that, <clears throat> so having seen the effects of a change in the market so size, that is demand side um, market change or various supply side market changes, we've seen uh, that, that a variety of changes in circumstances can uh, cause natural monopolies to cease being a natural monopoly or or indeed cause markets that that weren't initially a natural monopoly can turn them into a situation where you know a natural monopoly is required focusing on the former of those possibilities that we have a situation where sort of market competition can't work to one in which it potentially can work what are some of our policy options now you know, the first thing that, that would come to mind well is, you know, maybe maybe just deregulate, right, and let competition sort of take place. Uh, that, of course, is, is an option, and, and it, it may be appropriate, right? It may be maybe the best best option, right? Uh, it could be the case that we, you know, sort of we slowly remove controls, right? And a third option might be to partially deregulate, to deregulate aspects of the industry. Um, you know, perhaps we have a situation where, you know, it, it looks like aspects of a given industry can be competitive and others, you know, can so much. Okay, so maybe we, we're inclined to deregulate the seemingly more competitive aspects of a given industry. Okay, or partial deregulation. So see option number three over there. All right. This idea of partial deregulation can uh, very easily be problematic. Okay, consider a situation where costs look like this. That is, we have sort of two goods, X and Y, that are produced within an industry. Right. So um, I'm going to use a, 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 a medical example because <laughs> it's the one I've got one. I've got a story example right in my pocket, sort of on this one. Okay. So, of course, the medical industry is regulated. Hospitals are highly regulated. Uh, they are natural monopolies in, in a lot of smaller markets, right? You get one and that you only need one hospital to serve. Sometimes they're even operated by the public sector, okay? Uh, but let's say that that produces a series of goods. So let's, for, for a hospital, let's say that they produce sort of surgeries and then they produce general care, right? Okay, so examples X and Y. And the cost structure is such that those two things can be produced together at a lower cost than if we were to separate them out into different businesses, right? So that's what we're showing here, that the cost of producing X and Y in sort of combination is actually less than the cost of producing only X, zero Y, plus only Y, zero X, okay? So the cost of producing all medical care in one facility, in other words, is less than separating it into two facilities and producing both locations, which 
seems likely, right? Doesn't seem like an unreasonable example. Okay. If say we it looks like surgeries, you know, maybe can be competitive. The industry, the independent costs of, of the Y, let's say Y in this one as case, looks like it could be competitive, whereas you know X remains clearly a natural monopoly. Okay. We can run into this problem of cream skimming, whereby <clears throat> um, what happens is that indeed the in, the one market becomes competitive, firms enter, right? Uh, however, uh, the other good, the natural monopoly good, uh, is produced in such a way that uh, when the other good is removed, the Y good is removed, it becomes less efficient than it already was. Okay, so maybe say surgeries become competitive, you get a lot of surgery clinics that kind of open up in your area, it's a very profitable sort of market to operate in, but general care is far less profitable and so by removing the surgeries what ends up happening is that the firms that the, the natural monopoly and in sort of general care uh, becomes even less effective, less cost minimizing as a producer uh, uh, as a result. Okay, so let's sort of look at the sort of formalization of this idea, right? <clears throat> so just to quickly recall, right, we've got a uh, industry that produces a few different products, right? Or maybe there's a natural monopoly, right? It's a single firm producing a variety of products, uh, X and Y. Uh, and uh, we, we've ascertained that, you know, one of these goods uh, is, could, could potentially uh, um, house a competitive market, right? Because potentially competitive, Whereas, you know, the other aspect of it probably is not. And then finally, we've also ascertained that these two goods, X and Y, um, are cost effectively produced together, right? So when we house them together, it's she lowers costs than producing them independently. In our example, this is maybe like a hospital that produces general care as the one good, and then maybe surgeries as the other. Okay, so looking over here, we have, we'll notice we have two, two separate markets x y right these are two goods and the regulator has set prices at p0 so we see p0 here and p0 here now despite the differences in height please note that they're the same price so if p0 is 100 this is 100 here and this is 100 here so that that could cause some confusion if you're aware of that then it becomes very straightforward okay now we'll note a few things about this. We'll notice that there's these multiple AC curves in each case. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. But suffice to say that in the Y market, average cost is greater than the price, and that in the X market, average cost is less than the price. In other words, at this regulated price, the Y market uh, is effectively being subsidized by the X market. You know, of course, it's, it's quite quite common for firms that offer a multiple services to do things like that for all, some good reasons and some less good reasons, but suffice to say there's lots of reasons why you do that. Now the problem that we potentially run into in this is, you know, let, let's let say that, you know, it looks like uh, formally, you know, we'd regulated this price, we've regulated entry, right? So the whole sort of thing is locked, locked down. It's a natural monopoly. Price is locked down. Uh, nature of services locked down so on and so on and so forth and we've done some analysis and it looks like I indeed the the y good could become competitive so if we deregulated that aspect of this industry that competition sort of pop up and you know be lots of producers and sort of take care of itself okay um, we see that that th that what is likely to happen is is that that industry is or a comp competitive excuse me, <laughs> competitors are like to pop, likely to pop up in those markets. If a potential entrant, say this is competition, right, or a competitor, okay, uh, is able to, um, excuse me, over here, uh, if the potential competitor is, you know, bids any price or enters the market with a price of lower than P0, uh, they'll effectively be able to operate profitably, um, uh, but, uh, however, what they'll end up doing is they'll end up exacerbating the situation in the Y market here, right? So, for example, if in our hospital, if surgeries are very, um, 
it's such that the price of surgery in the natural monopoly hospital is uh, subsidizing general care, right? And if we deregulate entry into surgeries, right, we're almost certain to get a bunch of surgery clinics sort of pop up here and there, right? Um, but of course, those surgery, those surgery operations within the natural monopoly have been subsidizing general care. And that is something that we wanted to do because the externalities associated with lack of general care are significant, okay? Um, what we do by deregulating those that aspects of that industry is that the costs of providing general care in within the remaining natural monopoly uh, are likely to be even worse than they were before, right? So the costs are going to be higher, and if we want to keep that thing going, we might even need to raise prices uh, further further up still in order to cover the costs. So it's potentially uh, risky to deregulate aspects of industry where uh, you, you might have certain types of industry uh, subsidizing other parts of that industry uh, and that would be particularly uh, risky in environments where you know there are externalities present so if you're trying to sort of subsidize certain aspects of the natural monopoly uh, with more profitable elements of the natural monopoly uh, you should be aware that partial deregulation of those areas are, are almost certain to damage your ability to provide uh, the basic structure. So an example of that is something like like an airport, of course, which is also very, you know, one of these things. There are aspects of running an, an airport is almost certainly a natural monopoly in virtually every city, right? It's, 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 there are cities that have multiple airports like New York and London and, and, and several others, international airports, I mean here. Uh, but it's pretty rare, right? Most of them just have one. And there are aspects of running an airport that are profitable and other aspects that, that aren't. And if you deregulate certain aspects of it, particularly the more competitive and profitable, profitable aspects, uh, you're going to make it more difficult to continue, for, to continue operations in the less profitable aspects of it. Okay, let's quickly then look at an application uh, of of this idea. So we use the one example is of sort of hospital or medical service, right? Another example is potentially this idea of net neutrality. Okay. So <clears throat> you know what is net neutrality? Well, you know, as 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 you see over here, right, there's no there's no consensus opinion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> BAS is broadband internet uh, access service providers. Okay. So providers of broadband internet <clears throat> But the idea, the sort of the, the sort of colloquial understanding of net neutrality, uh, is these sort of five elements here, as proposed by the FCC, right? So we're gonna <clears throat> have no blocking, so no blocking people's access to the broadband, uh, no throttling, which is deliberately slowing down uh, of some movement on the internet, no priority lanes, so so sort of no fast tracking certain types of internet activity. Uh, no unreasonable interference is self-explanatory and then the entire process of moving information around on the internet uh, is transparent you know yeah. roughly 20 years ago so around you know 2000 there was a lot of discussion amongst economists of whether we could sort of price various aspects of the internet so for example like let's say you were a business maybe you could buy superior internet access that then all the little pieces of information that you're sending across the internet would be prioritized Right, and they would sort of move faster. And and internet nerds, right? Like, I realize this is not a perfect analogy of how the internet works. Okay, so <laughs> bear with me, right? Suffice it to say that that it is possible uh, to move certain pieces of information faster across the internet to prioritize it and move other pieces of information slow. And so economists were discussing the possibility of pricing this, right? And so that you would, if you wanted your information to move more quickly. Uh, you know, you, you would you'd maybe pay a higher price, and um, if you wanted, if if you're okay with it moving slower, you know, maybe maybe you pay a lower price. Similar like land shipping, right? So you can you can have a thing halfway around the world by tomorrow if you want to pay for it, or if you know if you want to go low budget, you can wait a few months. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, whether this is uh, technically possible was was argued at the time, and honestly, I haven't kept up with the discussion, so I'm not sure where it is now. Uh, but economists uh, were, were very excited by the idea of 
you know, providing sort of the right price, if it were, for movement of, of information on the internet. Net neutrality is the idea that you don't do that, right? That sort of the way information moves around the internet is sort of free and open and without prioritization. Okay, so over here then we see some of the, the more technical arguments for net neutrality, right? Um, that that mimic the discussion that we've been having regarding the, the fact that there are certain aspects of the provision of internet service that are almost certainly natural monopoly based, the, the basic hard stuff of the internet. <clears throat> and then that other aspects of it are very likely to be um, potentially competitive, right? That, that maybe you could have a pricing scheme like, like I described a few minutes ago uh, that would, you know, price certain softer aspects of, of how information moves around the internet uh, in, in a competitive manner. Uh, but of course, things can't move around the internet without sort of the hard physical infrastructure of the internet, um, as it were, uh, which, which of course is, is not likely to ever, well, I shouldn't say ever, but certainly in the foreseeable future is not likely to ever be competitively produced. So what we've seen in this video lecture is one, natural monopolies can exist and then they can cease to exist or they cannot exist and come into existence. These changes can occur for on the cost side or they can occur on the demand side. All things be equal, an expansion of the market, demand side will tend to reduce the likelihood that a given industry is a natural monopoly and the reverse or shrinking of the market size. On the cost side, the results are more ambiguous. A reduction in fixed costs is all things going to be equal, going to be less likely that an industry is characterized by a natural monopoly. An increase in fixed costs will be the reverse. A change in variable costs is ambiguous. Okay? Depending upon the price elasticity of demand, increases in variable costs could result in a uh, increased likelihood of a natural monopoly or a decreased likelihood in a natural monopoly. And of course the same goes for a reduction in variable costs, whether it moves an industry into or out of natural monopoly situation. Okay, which then brought us to the idea of potential deregulation and particularly uh, the idea that that we might have a firm that produces multiple goods uh, and it's cost effective for them to do so and it's consequence cost effective for consumers for it to be operated that way but there may be aspects of that production that could be competitive uh, and then we talked a little bit about the problems that can arise if those areas are deregulated uh, and competition allowed to exist in those markets where they uh, where the industry that provides them is in some cases linked to other aspects of of that type of um, economic activity. In the case we use primarily was medical care, but another example would be um, internet provide provision, right? Other example yet that comes to my mind are like airports. Okay, so like with you know you've got the basic airport, right, and then you've got like the snack stand inside the airport. Okay, um, so there's a lot of examples whereby. Uh, these sort of issues come into play where you have sort of one thing being provided and then you have all these sort of sub um, sub industries within it. Okay, I uh, hope you found this useful and uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye.